Gamers! Happy Halloween, everyone! Uh, I am your host, Chris Siever, and welcome to another episode of Equip from the 80s. And this is the final, uh, I guess, Halloween-themed episode. There's certainly going to be more horror episodes, but um, uh, today is Halloween! So I thought I would drop this uh, little uh, special vid and uh, see if we can get through this in one... One video. Uh, <laughs> I have a... So what we're going to do, folks, is I am going to go through all of my horror Blu-ray. Um, you know, I have some DVDs left, and I have some VHS here and there, but not not a ton. Um, oh, but I also have my ghoul aid. <laughs> You know, I'm going to get parched because I tend to talk, but I'm going to try to, uh, try to not get into every little film that I pull out and show. Um, I have a tendency to go a little overboard on my history with some of these things, but I want to try to keep the video, uh, as short as I can. <laughs> um, but still give you a little, little entertainment. Um, so yeah, we're just going to go through the horror Blu-rays, um, and I gotta tell you folks, uh, I don't know if you've listened to some of the previous videos, uh, and you know, there's a couple, uh, showing off Blu-rays and DVD videos on the channel, but this is your updated version, um, as of Halloween 2020, and as I've said before, I am not a collector collector, if you will. I, I buy the movies that I know I absolutely love or like. I don't, if it's a horror movie, I don't just, oh, automatically I get it, to add it to a collection so that the collection is giant and huge and, you know, I don't watch half of the movies. It's just to show off. I, I'm not one of those guys Everything that I own, I either, I either love or like, uh, and I want. And I watched it, <laughs> or I watch it several times. Um, so, yeah, so it's not going to be very vast. Um, it just is what it is. And, uh, you know, I've been a horror fan since I was a little kid in the early 80s. I was born in 77, and I saw horror at a very young age because of my mom and my uncles, and it certainly scared me as a youngster, uh, but I totally became enamored with it, and um, even became a filmmaker because of a horror film. My mom took me to see Nightmare on Elm Street in 1984, wanted to be a filmmaker, after that, I was seven years old. Now, you know, I also love comedy and science fiction and fantasy, and I was a Star Wars kid and all that stuff, and still am. And I definitely never made a straight-up horror film, because that's just not me. I love absurdist comedy, so I mix the two and all of that. There's plenty of filmmakers, plenty of people out there doing the, the real horror, the, the crazy horror stuff, and... I'm not one of them, but I enjoy it, and so, and I think you'll find a, 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 you know, a reflection of that within the things that I own and I love or like, and we'll get to that. So, I will go row by row right now, there's, let's see, one, two, three, four, there's like four rows uh, of horror, and I will quickly go through them now, and uh, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see how long the video ends up. I'm hoping it's not too long. It'd be nice if we could get it down to an hour. We'll see. So first up is the Universal Monster set from uh, years ago. I love this set. Uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon is my favorite uh, uh, Universal Horror monster. But I love Frankenstein and I love Wolfman. Dracula, that Dracula, never been a big fan of. The Bela Lugosi Dracula, that film in general, not a big fan of that. But I do love vampires. I do love other Dracula, which we will get to. Um, so I have that, and then 
I'm not sure. I think I have these just because it has all the the other, you know, Abbott Costello, Meet the Monsters, all that that stuff. I think that's maybe why I have these two sets. Um, but yeah, yeah. Oh, and by the way, that creature from the Black Lagoon, the 3D version of that on the Blu-ray, whew, it is gorgeous. Gorgeous! It's something to behold on a 120-inch screen with a 4K projector and player and all that stuff. It's, it's something, something else. Uh, I have the Vincent Price Collection 2. And I love a lot of the Vincent Price movies, the early Vincent Price movies, but my favorite Vincent Price movie is House on Haunted Hill, and it's great to have it here in this collection, all cleaned up and looking nasty. Looking good. Um, here we go with the hammers. I am a huge ha hammer horror fan. Um, I'm waiting to get all the ones I love on Blu-ray, and they're, I mean, between, you know, Synapse and, and uh, Warners and... And uh, Scream Factory, they're they're coming hot and heavy. Uh, but this is a this is the this is that set, and then I got the Twins of Evil. Uh, one of, if not my favorite Hammer Horror, The Curse of Werewolf, Scream Factory. Uh, ooh, this this movie, I love this movie. Plague of the Zombies, so good. One of my favorite Dracula films. My favorite Dracula film. Horror of Dracula or Dracula. And my favorite Frankenstein. The Curse of Frankenstein. Love Hammer Horror and I hope to add a bunch more to my collection. Uh, come Christmas. <laughs> wink, wink, wife. Mm, wifey. Um, then we get into the Fright Night collection. You all know uh, that uh, Fright Night, the 1985 film, is my favorite horror film of all time. I have a shrine. I have the, the VHS, the DVD, the beta, uh, the Laserdisc, uh, the first Blu-ray that came out. The second Blu-ray that came out, um, I just, I love Fright Night. Um, here is Fright Night 2, and I believe this is the Spanish or Italian Blu-ray of Fright Night 2. But it's in English, and it's gorgeous on the big screen, full HD, it's beautiful. I love Fright Night 2. Um, Fright Night the Remake, which I really enjoy. I really enjoy. And, surprisingly, I like the Fright Night 2, whatever the hell it is, remake slash sequel of <laughs> whatever the fuck. It's a weird one, but I like it. The only thing I hate about this movie is the, uh, the Peter Vincent in it. Oof. Oof. No thanks. And then we got, of course, the You're So Cool Brewster Fright Night documentary, which is like eight hours long, and it is magical. Love it, love it, love it. Not Fright Night, my friends. Uh, then we're going to Texas Chainsaw 2 and Leatherface Texas Chainsaw 3. Um, I love Part 2. It is my favorite. I am not a fan of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It just does nothing for me. It never has, and I don't think it ever will. I actually like the remake, the uh, 2003 remake, way better than the original. But out of all of them, part two is my favorite, and right behind that is Leatherface. Um, okay, now we got the Halloween set. And you've heard me talk about the Halloween movies. Uh, one, four, and five out of the, I guess, continuing saga <laughs> back then are my favorites. And I only like five because it connects to four. Um, really, I love four a lot. The original is my favorite. I love Halloween three, but it's like, 
you don't really, I don't know, I don't really count it as part of these movies, because it's just, it literally is its own thing, um, but it's super fun. Uh, so yeah, and then I loved, I did love the 2018, uh, reboot, sequel, requel. Uh, and then we just talked about this, the Friday set, got a chum. I have watched them, uh, and it's a, it's a mixed bag, but overall, I do really enjoy how they handled the set, overall. There's some things that are a little clunky, but overall, I'm, I'm very happy with it. Um, Crystal Lake Memories, the documentary. I like it. I don't love it, but I liked it enough that I, I wanted to have it. Uh, the Nightmare set, I'm really hoping Scream does a, uh, <laughs> a set of this. That would be fantastic. Um, and I do have uh, Never Sleep Again, the, uh, the documentary on DVD that when it first came out. Um, and then I have a bootleg of uh, Freddy's Nightmares, uh, every episode of Freddy's Nightmares. Uh, and the, it's actually pretty damn good because it was taken right from the Chiller channel. So it's, you know, broadcast quality, but it's better than any version or bootleg I've, I've seen before this one. Uh, so this is the one to have, guys. Um, and we got the uh, Shout Factory, Scream Factory, Creepshow. Creepshow is my favorite George Romero film. Love it, love it, love it. Um, I have this version because I had it um, before that one. You know, if you have a region-free Blu-ray player or whatever. It's all good to go, but I have this uh, because of the the Just Desserts documentary. Uh, I didn't find a need to get the single release of that because I have it on this. So then we got the Shout or Scream, excuse me, uh, Creep Show Two edition. Um, I like the sequel nowhere near as much as. The first one. I love the first one. I like the second one. Then we got the Criterion uh, Night of the Living Dead. Never looked better. Love this one. Never looked better. And the Umbrella release of Night of the Living Dead 90. Absolutely love this film. Directed by Tom Savini and written by Romero. I love it. Love it. I love it more than the original because uh, I just love the updates they made, um, and I love how Barbara isn't a catatonic, useless creature. Uh, and of course, the this is the Arrow release of Dawn of the Dead, which I've had <laughs> forever since it came out, um, and I did pre-order the 4K, uh, the big set coming. I did pre-order that, so I'm Hoping that does not get cancelled. <laughs> I pre-ordered it through Amazon UK, and we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, uh, my favorite Romero zombie film is Day of the Dead. Absolutely love this film. Great uh, scream transfer of this. And we got Two Evil Eyes, Dario Argento and Romero. I love it. Love the film. It's so creepy and gross and weird and unsettling. I love it. Romero. King. Dark Half. <laughs> Very underrated film. Um, I think it's great. And, of course, Tales from the Dark Side, the movie, the, the new uh, Scream release. This is a fantastic release, guys. Absolutely. Especially if you are a special features nut like I am, a uh, movie docu-nut. They did such a good job on the, the documentary on this set. It's like, I think because we haven't had a lot of truly great docs in a long time because a lot of these shitty companies are just, they just don't put 
any effort into their special features anymore, which is a cry and shame because that's, I mean, one of the big reasons why I get physical media, other than to have the the movie in the best quality as I can. I, I will never, I'll never go digital, all, physical media all the way till my grave. Uh, now we go into. My favorite uh, horror director of all time is John Carpenter. Uh, love me some fog. Escape from New York. The Thing, my favorite Carpenter film. Christine. Oof, Big Trouble in Little China. Oh man, classic! They Live, and I did order the um, the 4K They Live from Scream Factory, so I'm waiting on that with the uh, action figure with the In the Mouth of Madness. Absolutely love this film. And Body Bags. Listen, folks, just because Carpenter is my favorite uh, uh, genre director, horror director, doesn't mean I have to own everything he's done. These are the films that I absolutely love. He's done a lot of films, yes, and I don't own them because I don't like them. So, it's that simple. I can already see the comments, but why don't you have this, this, this? It's simple, because I don't like them, or don't like them enough to own them in my collection. I'm not a completist. I don't need, you know, this movie or that movie just because it's in the series. Fuck that. No thanks. It's a waste of space. It's a waste of money. Uh, let's see. Yep. And we got, yeah. We got the UK steelbook of um, The Return of the Living Dead. I uh, dropped all the other versions that I had to get this one because of the particular uh, good stuff uh, that was in it. Um, of course, the the more brains was included. The original soundtrack was included. I love that they had uh, 45 Grave on here doing an interview. All that good stuff. This is a solid, solid steelbook of this film. And then Scream Factories Part Two. <laughs> I really love this movie. And Return of the Living Dead 3 from Vestron. Again, I love it. Uh, the Exorcist. I like the film. I don't love it, but I like it, and I like it enough to have it in my collection. Um, now this one's interesting. This one, and I, this will pop up now and again... Um, there are some titles in here that I have because Katie really likes the movie, so she wanted to add to the collection. Um, she certainly likes a lot of the movies that I just mentioned. In fact, The Thing is one of her favorite movies of all time. Uh, so is Creepshow. Um, but we have this set because of Katie. So she wanted the, the first three children of the corn films, um... You know, I like them. I just don't love them. Uh, I actually saw Children of the Corn 2 in theaters. Um, and I've talked about that theater before. I will probably talk about it again at some time, but I'm not going to go into it now. Just to keep this video down. But, uh, yeah, yeah, so this is the 88 Films trilogy set. You know. Uh, then we got the Arrow... Hellraiser set, uh, one through three. I happen to love part four as well. I wish we would get a director's cut, uh, Kevin Yeager's director's cut. I would love to see that. Um, but I love four. Um, and anything after four, no thanks. So as far as I'm concerned, Hellraiser stops, starts with one, ends with four. And that's how it is in my house, <laughs> in my brain. But uh, yeah, there you go. Great set, beautiful set. And here we go. The Chucky films, 
Um, I really loathe Seed of Chucky. Thought it was terrible. I remember with the gang walking out of the theater of that movie and just being like, poop, poop. No thanks. Uh, love Bride of Chucky. Love it. Mwah. And then uh, when they came back, they came back strong um, with The Curse of Chucky, which is also on this set. Loved Curse of Chucky. Such a great, such a great return. And then I was, then I was kind of bummed with what they did with The Cult of Chucky. You know. But whatever. <laughs> the ones I love are in this set. Obviously, the first one is amazing. Two holds a special place in my heart because my uncle and I went to see two and we just had a, a riot with it when it opened in the theaters. Um, here we go. The Arrow House set with just one and two because those are the only two that I uh, really cherish. And one is an absolute uh, favorite of mine and my wife's. Uh, Katie loves a uh, house. And yeah, this set is gorgeous. This, 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 guys, this isn't even a DVD. This is a, this is a straight up book. Hardcover book. I mean, they did such a, whew, such a fantastic job. I got Katie the, um, the vinyl, uh, soundtrack of one and two signed by Harry Manfredini. Uh, for Christmas last year. The, the cherished in the house, the, the poster, well it was hanging up, a house, oh I think it's out, out in the, out in the hallway. Uh, <laughs> love this series. Critters, Critters 1 and 2 are obviously the best, and 2 is my favorite out of all of them. Um, but I gotta tell you, I like all four of the Critters films hated the new stuff. I really did. I did not like what they did with the new stuff. But I love this set and I'm so happy they put it out. Scream! Here we go. This set is also magnificent. This is the Scream Factory Fly set. Um, I'm not a big fan of Curse of the Fly, but the Fly, Return of the Fly, the Fly 86 and the Fly 2 1989 I think are spectacular and it's a beautiful set and they look fantastic and uh, man uh, Katie and I watched because she had never seen the original Fly we watched the Fly again on a 120 inch screen 4k projector Whew. fucking movie looks so good so good! God damn! Oh, speaking of good! This is my favorite Fulci film. The Beyond. The Arrow release. This was one of those movies that holy shit, it scared me as an adult, too. Now, I had watched it since I was a teenager. Scared me then. And I, would, I got a bootleg from Blackest Heart Media. And, uh... I was blown away by it. And that's how I saw most of my Fulci films. You could rent Zombie when I was growing up. And it was fun. I mean, it was fine. Best part is the zombie and the shark and everything. <laughs> but it wasn't anything that, like, blew my mind. It was when I saw, you know, the other shit. That was, like, phew, through bootleg VHS and stuff. Uh, but The Beyond always stuck with me. I still don't 100% know what the hell is happening in the movie and I've seen it countless times um, and it always has scared me but what's funny is I recently went to see Fabio Frizzi the the uh, composer uh, of the film who did the score and I saw him live and he played him and his band played with uh, the beyond in, uh, on the big screen and while it was a really fun night and I had a blast uh, seeing it on the big screen like that, in that quality, um, it was very silly. And, you know, we were all kind of laughing and <laughs> the audience was having a blast. And it really kind of knocked out all the scares for me. Uh, although, I don't know. If I was in here with all the lights down and no one else was in the house and I put it on, it might still creep me out again. But I love this film. 
Uh, where was it? Okay. And here's the talk about this. Mm. Lumberto Bava's seminal, true horror classic, as far as I'm concerned, Demons, produced by Dario Argento. Love this film. This is one of those movies that I saw like late night cable when I was a kid, and it scared the fuck out of me. But man, did I love it. And uh, this is a great Blu-ray. It looks fantastic. Synapse Films. I, I tell you, if this came out in 4K, I would grab this. Um, here's another one. This is a double whammy. Part 3 can go fuck itself, but 1 and 2, Warlock. 1 and 2. 1 is good, but 2, for me, uh, Swedish Chef Kiss. Swedish Dirty Flirty Glirty Sturdy Glirty Bjork Bork. Oh, two, the Armageddon, I think is fantastic. Saw it in theaters twice. Waxwork and Waxwork 2. This set from, from uh, what is this, Vestron? So good. I'm so happy they did this. This is uh, Waxwork is one of my favorite films. Um, I've had the poster for years. I've had the, the uncut VHS since it was released in the video store. I, I really, really love this movie, and I love Anthony Hickox. I have an Anthony Hickox uh, adoration video down on the channel. You can find it, um, but I love that man. He's made some really great films that I go over in that uh, episode, so check it out. Uh, where was it? Okay. Okay. Jeez, I gotta, gotta stop yapping. Gotta stop yapping, guys. Where are we at? Okay. Um, so we got Poltergeist. Beautiful, beautiful film. Love it, love it, love it. The Lost Boys, absolutely a classic. The Howling, Joe Dante, love it. So happy that Scream finally put this out. This is an underrated gem. Love it, and I love the ending. The Burning is my favorite Friday the 13th film that's not a Friday the 13th film. When I do Friday the 13th marathons, I watch The Burning first, and then I go right to Friday the 13th Part 2. Here's why. Uh, ever since I was a kid, I found Friday the 13th, the first film, to be boring as fuck. I love it for what it did, but The Burning, <laughs> far more interesting characters, fun characters, uh, Cropsy is terrifying, beautiful, and again, I love Tom Savini. I, I worship that man since I was, you know, late 80s, early 90s. I love this dude. Uh, so the effects in Friday are top notch, but the effects he did in the burning, again, the first time I saw an uncut burning was a uh, Blackest Heart Media uh, VHS import, bootleg, uh, and I was blown away. So I love it. Also love Slumber Party Massacre, and I like Slumber Party Massacre 2 as well. Um, I missed out on the, the Blu-ray release when they put those out. And I feel ashamed that I did because now it goes for, like, ridiculous amounts of money that I just won't pay for. But I do love Part 2. In fact, I like Part 2 better than Part 1, but I still love 1. Um, Hell Knight. I have a love-hate relationship with Hell Knight. You know, I, I think it is more with nostalgia for me. Uh, because, again, I rented it as a kid, and I remembered it a lot. Um, I always thought Linda Blair back then was so cute. Certainly Savage Streets. Uh, uh, my goodness. Um, but Hell Knight, you know, uh, probably from, like, the age 30 to now, 40, I'm 43 now, ever, when I put it in, it, it just doesn't grab me like it used to. Um, so I think I might have this just for the nostalgia reasons. Um, Sleepaway Camp, love it, classic. The original Pet Cemetery, 4K, beautiful. Creepy ass masterpiece as far as I'm concerned. 
Zelda, stay out of my dreams! Mm. That's right, you heard me. Zelda! Get out of my dream. Get into my trunk and stay there, Zelda! Get in the fucking trunk and stay there, you creep me out. God damn it, to this day I hate you. Um, Pet Cemetery 2. I like it. I don't love it, but I like it. So, I have it. Um, ooh! A Halloween classic. Trick or treat. Just talked about this in my Halloween episode, uh, in my Halloween viewing episode. Love Trick or Treat. This is the German Blu-ray. I don't understand why Scream or any other fucking company isn't putting this out. Proper-like. Uh, now this is a one of those duos. This is me and Katie. We both love this movie. Um, so she brought it into the collection. Night of the Comet. Really good. Classic. Come on now. Classic, classic. Chamo. Uh, 4K. This actually looks really great in 4K, as dirty and grimy as it is. Maniac. Mm, how can you... Oh, great performances. Caroline Monroe. Caroline Monroe, my hammer girl. And we got uh, Savini going ape shit. So good. Ooh, this is an underrated classic. Toby Hooper, The Fun House. Such atmosphere. Really love it. <laughs> Scream! Scream, you done doing me great! Ah, uh, Kevin Dillon. Victory! The Blob. <laughs> so good. Amazing special features. Looks so great. So much fun. We got a double whammy, you know? We got the original 1981 Canadian classic, My Bloody Valentine. And the 2009 My Bloody Valentine 3D. Both great fun films. And again, the 3D, spectacular. Uh, Katie loves this movie. This is the uh, 79 Invasion of the Body Snatchers. It's fine. But we have it in there because Katie, Katie got it, so she wanted it in there. Classic, come on now. Rocky Horror Picture Show. I watch it every year. Half since I was probably 12 years old. Uh, two classics. So great to have on uh, physical media when they hit uh, DVD. And then, of course, Blu-ray I had to upgrade and all that good stuff. And here we are. Night of the Creeps and the Monster Squad. Fred Decker's Undisputed Classics. 100%. From a kid on, I have loved these films. What can you say? I've had the, the theatrical posters side to side next to each other probably for, in, in every place I've been in, probably for 20 years now. Just amazing. And I just watched the Wolfman's Got Nards doc, which is fantastic. Very nostalgic. Very heartwarming, and it puts a giant smile on your face. Loved it. Ho, 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 ho. Christmas horror classics. We got Black Christmas, Bob Clark, Christmas Story, Porky's Bob Clark, Christmas Story. I farted on Margot Kidder. True Story. Silent Night, Deadly Night, the original, 84. And, of course, Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. Stupid fun, but as far as I'm concerned, the first one is a true classic. Great films. We watch them every Christmas season. Um, fantastic. We got the uh, Jim Wynorski Chopping Mall. This is a great Vestron release. Super, super cool to have on Blu-ray. We got Halloween Classics, Night of the Demons, and Night of the Demons 2. Watch them every Halloween. Absolute classics in my book. Love them. Love them. Hate Part 3. Not like Part 3. Caroline Monroe, back for the attack. Slaughter High. 
Great music by, of course, Harry Manfredini, who throws in some, some Friday the 13th motifs in there. Super fun, great disc from Vestron. This might surprise people, but I actually really enjoy this film. This is the 1989 Robert England Phantom of the Opera. I really, really dig it. Great release. And right, now we got the 4K release of one of the just most amazing films ever, Gremlins. <sighs> Lots of people are poo-pooing this release. But I think it looks fantastic, especially on a 4K projector, displayed 120 inches. Woo! Gremlins 2. I like it, but I don't. But I don't love it. Um, when I saw it in the theaters, I was like having the ball, having a ball with it. Um, but to me, Gremlins, the original, is always going to be. It's always going to win out. This is a great film, as far as I'm concerned. This is the Arrow release of Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Huge Elvira fan since I was little. Being a, being a connoisseur and uh, having an obsession with large natural breasts since I was four years old, uh, you couldn't help but love Elvira. She was everything this monster kid loved. Horror, sexiness, uh, uh, snarkiness, you know... Uh, just valley girlish, uh, just everything. And then the big boobs, the horror, and all. And was Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Great set, great set. Another fan favorite of my wife, um, and she got this release. This is a great steel book. Life Force, Toby Hooper's Life Force. What a great film. Underrated, as far as I'm concerned. Truly. Um. Where's my, where's my un, unnameable peeps, huh? You know, I come across so many people who are just like, one, I've never heard of the movie, or two, man, that movie sucks, but <laughs> I love this movie. I was so stoked when this was being released on Blu-ray, because this, this was a VHS constant rental for me. It used to scare the shit out of me, but uh, it's super fun. Uh, it's an H.P. Lovecraft story. There is an Unnameable 2. Not as good, but I, I really love this, so kudos. Uh, actually, the special features suck on this because they did a... I mean, it's a real chintzy job on the special features, but the transfer is fantastic. Uh, we got uh, Mark Lester's Class of 1999. He did Class of 1984. He did Commando. The, the guy knows his action. He knows his shit. This is just straight up cheesy ass exploitive fun. Ugh. What can you say? Pam Greer. Cybernetic Pam Greer. Give me a break. <laughs> Bradley Gregg doing his, his Corey Feldman impression. It's so great. <laughs> or is Corey Feldman doing a Bradley Gregg impression? Uh, underrated. Um, I absolutely love this movie. Uh, I remember uh, seeing it in the theaters and flipping for it. I just think it's great. It's It just works for me. This is Stephen King's Sleepwalkers. And what a great transfer. So happy with this. Um, ooh. Now, this isn't really a horror, but it, it mixes. It's like a kid's Halloween horror film. Well, not Halloween, but it, it's, uh, you know, I loved it when it came out. Um, I reserved it as soon as it hit VHS. Uh, this is the Vestron release of Little Monsters. <laughs> I think it's a great movie. I really do. Uh, and then we got uh, Troll. Toxic Avenger. Terra Firmer, and my favorite trauma film of all time, Class of Nukem High. Uh, we got going on. We got to go. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what can you say? I'm not going to go into it, but I love it. Little Shop of Horrors. So good. I could tell you an anecdote from 1986. 
uh, about me and my aunt, but I won't uh, about this film. It'll take up too much time, but I have a history. <laughs> okay, and now we're going here. Whew. Okay, we're cruising. We're getting there, guys. Uh, this is the Raimi section. Evil Dead. Yep, yep. Evil Dead 2. Any of you fans out there have the 4K Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2, let me know what the transfers are like, because I, I have a hard time believing they look any better than the Blu-rays. Uh, if anything, what, it's going to bring out the grain even more? I don't know. Uh, Army of Darkness. Love-hate relationship with that film. The remake, hell yeah. Love, love, love this remake. So good. Of course, then we got the three seasons of Ash vs. Evil Dead. They're all there. Um, love Dark Man. Remember seeing it in theaters. Going to school, talking about how rad it was, and being picked on because I thought Dark Man was rad. From a bunch of kids who didn't see Dark Man, who had no idea what it is. But because I was geeking out about it, I was getting picked on. Fucking ridiculous. Um... Raimi and his cohorts, you know, Scott Spiegel, all those guys, Intruder, I think it's great. Real, real nasty slasher in a, in a uh, grocery store. And then uh, Raimi's return to horror, Drag Me to Hell. Love it. Love it. Damn it. Come on. I love it. It's so good. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's fantastic. Alright, let me go and tell them to zoom to Classic anthology. Freaked me out when I was a kid because that damn goblin troll. Cat's eye. We got Silver Bullet. Crom damn classic as far as I'm concerned. <sighs> pumpkin Head. And yes, I do like Pumpkin Head too. Mm. Amy Dolan, Solio Moon Fry, you kidding me? You got to give it up. Ah, uh, Mr. Clive Barker's Nightbreed. I gotta say, there was a lot of hype for that director's cut or the, the cabal cut or all that crap. I wasn't a fan when I finally saw it, so I stick to the theatrical. That's just me. But boy, do I love Lord of Illusions. I remember coming out of this with the girlfriend I had at the time, and she was repulsed. She thought the movie was just repugnant, but I was smiling ear to ear. Oh, then we got classics, Reanimator, Bride of Reanimator, and mm, mm, From Beyond. Katie also loves this movie, which is insane to me. Ah. <laughs> All right. John Landis, coming back. Innocent Blood, very underrated film, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, have, it this was a constant renter for me, just because of all the... One, I thought it was a really fun story, but two, there's so many cameos in this thing and I love them back in my my teen days uh, the 4k release of Dracula Bram Stoker's Dracula this as far as I'm concerned is a technological uh, atmospheric masterpiece I really really love this film all the shit that they did to to pull this movie off so great regardless of Keanu Reeves performance uh, Interview with a Vampire. I probably watch this once a year. Woo! Classic, classic, classic. I talk about this. We have a we have a specific video down on the channel about this film. Brain Scan. Go check it out. Now, this is the Wishmaster collection, and the only way you could get Wishmaster is if you got the collection. The other films are garbage in my book. But the first one I love. Um, then we got the Saw films. I like one through six, and that's about it. J.R. Bookwalter's The Dead Next Door. 
Robot Ninja. And the Dave Dakota classic, Nightmare Sisters with the original Scream Queens. Leprechaun films, I like one through three, you get four and five, and, you know, and six. <laughs> um, and then the Origins thing, which I didn't even bother watching, um, but I love one through three. I saw two in theaters. Another underrated gem as far as I'm concerned. Tony Randall's Ticks, so great. More Amy Dolan's action. Got some Seth Green going on there. Uh, Katie has this in here. Not a fan of it, uh, but she really likes it. Lawnmower Man, never liked it. Of course, we got Troll 2. Just dumb fun, of course. Um, Edward Scissorhands, not really a horror movie, but... Tim Burton's Gothic Sensibilities. Um, really, really love this film. And then Tim Burton's Ed Wood. And Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow, which, again, I fucking adore. I talk about on the Halloween movies episode. Um... Tim Burton's Sweeney Todd, which I really, really dig. And man, do I love this movie. <sighs> People hate this movie, and maybe it's because they grew up. And again, I did, you know, reruns when it was on. I watched Dark Shadows. Um, every now and again throughout my adulthood, I would pop on Dark Shadows here and there. But I really loved their take on Dark Shadows. I, I just think it's... I think it's damn good. I don't know. People, you know what I'm saying? This deserves a new release from Dust Till Dawn. Uh, I don't think it's ever looked that great on home video, be it the VHS, the DVDs, and I've had them all. Um, this needs a straight up 4K restoration. I don't know why Rodriguez isn't uh, doing something like that. Uh, it's got to get out of the hands of, uh, you know, the Weinstein Company, which is run by different people now, but Dimension needs to go somewhere else. They need to, somebody needs to pick these up and do some proper shit with them. Because I adore this film! Uh, another Rodriguez, The Faculty. I like it, don't love it, but I like it enough to own it. Uh, saw both of these in theaters. The Tales from the Crypt films, Demon Knight and Bordello of Blood. Demon Knight is the better film, but I have a lot of fun with Bordello of Blood. Saw both of them with uh, my cousin Casey in the theaters. Uh, one of my favorite Peter Jackson films, Heavenly Creatures. Uh, I'm still waiting for Peter Jackson. You know, it's been teased forever that he's putting out 4K versions of Heavenly Creatures, Bad Taste, Meet the Feebles, and Brain Dead. And I am waiting on that. God damn it. Uh, more Peter Jackson, The Frightening. Now, these are coming out on 4K, and I will be getting them Blade and Blade 2. I think both of them are fucking amazing films. Um, but uh, man, I can't wait to have Blade in 4K. They already look beautiful. Uh, the first Jeepers Creepers film. Ginger Snaps. I actually love three. Two, not so much. Uh, we went up to Canada to see part two when it opened in theaters, and we were kind of bummed. But uh, then three came out, and we liked three. Uh, Neil Marshall classic. The Descent. So fucking creepy and good. Whew! 
I love this movie. Cabin in the Woods. So great. And then we got Guillermo's Pan's Labyrinth. Hauntingly beautiful. Speaking of hauntingly beautiful and hammer-like, Crimson Peak. People didn't like this movie. I loved it. I was smiling from ear to ear in the theater. I just fell in love with it. Gothic love story, horror, ghost story, everything, hammer feel, atmosphere. Oh, loved it. Whew, Mike Flanagan. That guy, he's killing it. Mike Flanagan. Whew. Dr. Sleep. Loved this film. Now we're getting into some of these budget gems. Uh, we got the Empire Classic. Ghoulies and Ghoulies 2. Ghoulies 2 is way better than Ghoulies and Ghoulies 3 is way better than Ghoulies. Um, Terror Vision and Video Dead. Both great films but I love Terror Vision way more. Um, Empire's Terror Vision. Sorority Babes and the Slime Ball Bolorama. Empire Full Moon. We're getting into Empire Full Moon. Uh, Trancers. Trancers 2. What's this? Trancers 3. And that's where it ends with the Trancers for me. <laughs> Back then, when they first came out, I liked 4 and 5, but I recently watched them. Not so good. Demonic Toys. Got here. So, Puppet Master, Puppet Master 2, Puppet Master 3, the best Puppet Master film as far as I'm concerned, Puppet Master 4, Puppet Master 5, and Puppet Master 6, Curse of Puppet Master. Those are the only Puppet Master movies I have because those are the ones that I like. Uh, love Doll Man. I think it's a pune classic. Absolutely love Dr. Mordred. I think it's great. Always love this film. I think it's great. Full Moon's Doctor Strange. <laughs> Castle Freak. Beautiful Stuart Gordon, creepy, atmospheric, gothic classic. Love it, love it. Oh, oh, then we, oh, look at here. The subspecies films. Subspecies. Subspecies 2, Subspecies 3, and The Vampire Journals. Uh, I don't really like uh, Subspecies 4, and I'm hoping Subspecies 5 is good when they finally do it. We shall see, because Modern Full Moon just does not work for me. Uh, then we got eh, the Masters of Horror collection. Um, those are okay. Uh, then we got the... The double feature grindhouse set. Um, not a fan of Death Proof at all. I never watch it. Um, but love Planet Terror. Uh, these are okay. We have them because of Katie. She likes them a lot. 28 days later. 28 weeks later. Uh, this wrecked me in the theaters. The Mist. I was a new dad, so the, that ending really gut-punched me. I think it's beautiful. Beautiful film. Uh, we got... Alexander Aja! Piranha 3D. Fun, fun movie. Uh, this might surprise you. Underworld. Underworld 2, which is fucking amazing. As far as I'm concerned, Underworld 3, which is the prequel, really fun. And then Underworld 4, and that's, you know, that's enough for me. Uh, was not a fan of that last one, and I, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Uh, this is an underrated, as far as I'm concerned, uh, film, Daybreakers. A really fun, cool vampire film. Um... Now it's going into a lot of modern stuff. Uh, let's see, we got... Lights Out, which I thought was really effective, really cool. 
don't breathe. Whew. Whew. Super fun. This is super fun. And this, uh, my son also loves a lot. Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters 3D. I have a blast with this movie. Great practical effects in it as well. And this is an underrated film. Horns. Another Alexandra Asha film. Uh, Joe Hill, based on the novel by Joe Hill. I really love this movie. Then, of course, we have the modern classic. Watch it every year, several times a year. Talked about it. Trick or treat. Um, I'm not a big fan of this movie, but we have it because Katie really likes it. The Babadook. I would be okay if I never saw that film ever again. <laughs> it's fine. I didn't hate it, but it's a very annoying film. Um, and we got... Now, don't get me wrong. I do like uh, 1 and 2. I mean, uh, 2 and 3. But my favorite is The Purge. The first Purge. That is my favorite out of all of them. I haven't seen the f the the first Purge. <laughs> you know, you get what I'm saying. I haven't seen the new The First Purge. Um, maybe I will. I don't know. But, uh, uh, now we're going into the Juaniverse, the James Juaniverse, and we have. <laughs> Insidious, I love these films. Insidious Deuce, Insidious 3, and Insidious 4, and I just heard that, uh, uh, what's his name, Patrick Wilson is directing uh, the new Insidious film, Insidious 5. That I am excited about. Um, and then, so, Annabelle, which is fine, but Katie liked it. Uh, I did not like the second Annabelle, so I don't want it, but she wants to get it. But then, I really enjoyed Annabelle Comes Home, so I have it. Um, then we got, obviously, The Conjuring and The Conjuring 2. Great films. I'm really looking forward to Conjuring 3. Um, whew, two movies that I scream to the... to anybody who will listen to me. I think these movies... These are, to me, already are modern classics. And that is Happy Death Day and Happy Death Day to You. 1 and 2. I really hope they do a part 3. I'm really looking forward to Chris Landon's new film. Um, but yeah, I love these films. <sighs> I think it's so good. So good. <laughs> so good. Uh, this was a new one for me. I just recently saw this and liked it so much I had to buy it. Scary t stories to tell in the dark. This is going to be a yearly classic for me. A yearly watch around this season, Halloween season. And then we ended off with the new It, chapter one, and chapter two, and Ready or Not. Love me some Samara Weaving. I think she's great. The Babysitter, uh, Mayhem, Guns Akimbo, Bill and Ted 3, Ready or Not, I just think she's awesome. She was fantastic as well in Hollywood on Netflix. She's one to watch for show. Um, but yeah, and I do have the original miniseries of It, but it's on DVD. I never got the upgrade yet, but I will at some point. I know it's only like six bucks, um, but those are the horror Blu-ray I have. And that's it. I mean, like, I know that, uh, 
you know, people consider Alien uh, a horror film, and I do too, but it's horror sci-fi, and we can get into all of that. I'll probably do like a sci-fi fantasy action thing, and that's that's more of all this stuff. We'll, we'll get into that. Um, but yeah, so this was... Oh, and I do have some like ho kiddie horror films, or, or more fun, kid-friendly horror films, like... Uh, Let's see. I got Paranorman 3D. Monsters Go Home. We love the monsters. Um, Goosebumps, which was surprisingly great. Also in 3D. Um, Mad Monster Party, which I did talk about. Um, Zombieland. And Warm Bodies. Warm Bodies. Uh, it wasn't like a, it didn't blow us away, but what, this holds a special place in our hearts, me and my wife. Uh, this was the first movie we saw when we started dating together. Uh, so, we, we have it, you know. Uh, and then she has Shaun of the Dead, but I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of Shaun of the Dead. Uh, I prefer, see I was, I saw Spaced in 2002. It was the first uh, imported DVD I got for my um, region-free DVD player at the time. And so Spaced blew me away. So anything I saw after Spaced from those guys uh, just didn't, uh, <laughs> didn't resonate with me as much as Spaced did. And a actually, uh, on my f first honeymoon, I've been, I'm married twice now. Katie is my second and last fingers crossed, genitals crossed, uh, but my first uh, honeymoon we went to see the premiere of Land of the Dead with Romero and everybody in attendance and it was amazing and all these celebrities, Quentin Tarantino, Robert Rodriguez was there uh, and we were hobnobbing with all these celebrities but Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright were there and um, so I, and I have pictures of them where, with me and uh, Simon Pegg and uh, Edgar was a little more shy but all I talked to them about was Spaced. <laughs> Didn't even care. And Shaun of the Dead had just, like, it wasn't even out here in the States yet, uh, but it had come out overseas. I don't know, but I didn't, uh, that wasn't even a thing for me. Spaced was all I talked about. Anyway, enough is enough. I managed to do it. This is a little over an hour, but we did it, folks. Uh, I showed you my horror movie collection. Oh, I guess you could... I don't know. Well, no. I don't know. What do you add Godzilla? That's not really horror. It's like fantasy sci-fi. It's fun. I can get into the Godzillas later, but I do have a bunch of the Godzilla films as well and all that stuff. So, uh, And I have horror TV shows and things like that and all that stuff that's over there and some over there and some upstairs. <laughs> but there we go. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you guys have a fantastic Halloween. Be safe. The corona is still out there ravaging. So be smart. Be safe. Um, and thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for enjoying the channel. And uh, we've got some great stuff coming up soon. Uh, a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, so thank you. And, uh, and uh, we'll see you on another pandemically erotic episode of It Crept from the 80s. Happy Halloween, everyone. We'll see you next time. Help me.